Hey everyone, I uh, wanted to share a message. I'm trying to share it earlier in the day. That way I could, uh, um, when the kids wake up, boom, I'm doing breakfast for them. So, um, But I wanted to share something very personal with you guys uh, as far as something that I've heard many members say and it's affected them in being the highest selves that they can be in church. And uh, what I'm talking about is denying the bishop or whoever calls you uh, to do a sacrament talk. And um, I've only done it once um, since 2006, and I don't I don't remember why it was. I believe it was because I was um, going through a lot of trials, and oh, that's what it was. I was going through a lot of trials. I was I was uh, going through a few things, and so I made the excuse up in my mind that I'm, you know, the Lord would understand if I can just uh, bow out. And um, to be honest, I felt guilty, and I still to this day regret it because I feel, and I feel like someone told me this when <laughs> some uh, member told me this, but basically these talks aren't for the uh, listeners, but for the teacher. And ever since I heard that, anytime I've been called, I feel like the Lord is trying to teach us something that we can only learn if we teach others. That we feel that, that the purpose of the talk is for yourself. In fact, um, back in uh, biblical times, uh, during the time of Christ, uh, everything was quite in reverse uh, as far as, you know, when people used to um, sit down, they were actually the teacher and the people that would stand up would be the listeners. So I always picture it that whenever I'm talking to people, that it's the, it's as of the, of the times of old where everyone is teaching me. And uh, it served me because I realized that um, I need this talk and that there's, there's a reason why um, God gave it to me. You know, there was one where um, I remember I was like concerned about keeping covenants. And then I remember the talk was covenants. And <laughs> it was like really the, that exact week it had to do with covenants. And so um, I just want to share a couple of tips that might be able to help you out because it's not that you don't want to take the talk. Maybe um, you don't want to you don't want to talk to the congregation. It's that maybe you have a fear of public speaking. Maybe um, it is true that the people would rather die, would actually take their life instead of uh, speaking in public. And I respect that because that fear came from somewhere. Because really, the only innate fears that we have um, are fear of falling and uh, fear of dying. Those are the ones that we've been programmed. The rest has been altered by our own perceptions and um, but those are the, the only two natural ones that we actually have and inherit because we're human but everything else like I said is programmed and so at some point you said that people don't care about what I say or I don't influence people or I don't affect people or um, I'm scared in front of people because um, what if they are offended about what I say different things like that something you planted in your brain a while back and now it's consistently following you around to the point where you would deny a leader from the church a way to serve the people in the war. So I'm going to like try to take away some of those things to help you out because I feel for you. I've been there. Um, I was actually a huge wallflower back. Um, I went to military school around 1997. I was a huge wallflower around 1995, 1996, um, kind of like bef uh, beginning of high school. Before then, it was awful. I mean, I was super shy, barely spoke. I was just a really, really quiet guy, just walking around and observing things. And people would kind of mess with me, but hey, you don't talk that much. <laughs> um, so that was me. So if someone, if I were LDS at that time and a bishop said, hey, you need to go speak, it would be over. I, I would say, no, I'm not. Uh, definitely not, not doing that. So um, I want to talk to you. You who have turned down a leader from church and said, you know what, I can't do it. And you made up some excuse uh, to not speak. And I'm just letting you know that you missed out. You missed out on a huge opportunity um, to not only serve the Lord, but serve people around you. And you would have acquired new wisdom that you wouldn't be able to receive anywhere else. So I just want to give you like two or three tips and hopefully this helps out. So um, one of them is, um, is take the calling. Take the calling to, to, to volunteer. I'm just going to talk to you from the heart. I didn't write anything down. I just want to like speak to you as a friend. So the first one is just take the call. Number one, the reason why is because um, peop, uh, there's a saying that says that God is not uh, looking for ability. God is looking for availability. And 
that is something that I've always remembered. My mentor who baptized me told me that. He says, hey, don't forget, God's not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. He will make the ability once you're available. So sometimes we're waiting to be a certain person to do something. But in actuality, God is saying, do something and I will create the person. Volunteer. When you're, even when you're not ready, uh, if you build it, then they'll come, right? Same thing, feel the dreams. If you watch the movie, it's not, it's not they will come, then you build it. So it's, it's a matter of doing. It's kind of taking that leap of faith that even though you're not ready, even though you seem overwhelmed, even though it's not perfect timing, take that leap of faith because God will arm you. Because guess what? I'm going to tell you guys a little secret, guys. Ready? <clears throat> God loves you and the people you're taught you're going to talk to more than you love yourself and more than you'll ever love anybody else that you're talking to. When you're doing when you're if you're a missionary, guess what? You love your you love your uh, investigators, right? Guess what? God loves those investigators more perfectly than you do. So, even if you try to get in the way, he needs instead of God coming down himself, he needs you. That's it. You're just a wire. He's, he wants you to be like the glove and he is the hand. You see, because if he just showed up, first of all, we wouldn't be able to withhold his presence unless we were translated. <laughs> but besides that point, he needs us to go down there, us to go around. It's like a, um, Elder Uchtdorf once said, you know, like he was talking about a statue with Christ with no hands. See, we are the hands. Uh, so that's number one. Just take that leap of faith, number one. Number two, do your research on sacrament talks. I read a book. Um, I'm going to show you my iPad here. Uh, it's called Amen. Okay, I found it at Desert Books. Like I said, I'm not I'm not endorsing this. Uh, I'm, um, I'm not, uh, you know, someone who knows Celeste Lane Waite, the author. But I read this book. It says, Amen. Speak in church with purpose and peace. Hey, when I was a new convert, guess what I read? I read Amen because I was like, "Hey, I want to speak in church with purpose and peace." And guess what? I've never, I've, I've learned, I've learned the, these great lessons from this lady, and it was amazing. It was, uh, I learned a lot of great things, and I felt more confident in speaking. So I would definitely um, read Amen. It's called "Speaking in Church with Purpose and Peace" by Celeste Elaine Wait Wit. So that's a good one. Um, the second one that totally flipped my world around on how to speak publicly. Because a lot of you guys actually, when I see you guys go on the pulpit, you guys actually share a really good talk. Um, but for some reason, you're excusing yourself. You're saying, hey guys, I'm not really good at talking and speaking. And um, well, you know, or the bishops asked me to speak. And guys, <laughs> stop, stop. You're already tuning everybody out. And then guess what happens after that? You're the most, it has the most amazing message. Why are you sulking? Why are you hard on yourself? Stop. I'm, you're tuning everybody out in the beginning. You're cutting people off and you have an amazing message and you did amazing. And you don't believe me when I come to you and tell you, you did amazing. I want to shake you. You did amazing. Stop. So, but anyway, there's a book called How to Develop Self-Confidence and Influence People by Public Speaking by Dale Carnegie. Amazing book. Again, How to Develop Self-Confidence and Influence People by Public Speaking by Dale Carnegie. If you read those two books just alone, you would have a, uh, definitely a better um, outcome as far as public speaking and taking sacrament talks or teaching your class. Um, another thing that I do, and this is the, the last thing, is um, I pray. You know, Obviously, I pray for that uh, God may use me, that uh, I may get out of my own way. Uh, another thing that I do is I visualize, you know, a lot of, some people are like, it's very controversial, the secret and things like that. I don't find it, uh, or the law of attraction. I don't find it. Um, I find that every law was obviously created by God. I know that the words I am are very powerful and that, um, you can visualize and kind of see, um, everyone, you know, appreciating your words in your mind. You can see everyone appreciating your words, um, laughing when you laugh understanding when you want to speak something powerful, um, honing in on the power of silence, remembering everything you learned 
um, speaking with poise and confidence. So you can, you can visualize that. So that when you go up there, it's already done in your mind. And so when you go up there, all of a sudden, you know, you have all those things. Because where the brain goes, you go. Where your heart goes, you go. So uh, I also recommend, like I said, fasting. I, every time I used to... Um, Every time I used to speak, I would always fast. Why? Because in the scriptures, time and time again, Jesus either rebukes his disciples and says, you didn't fast. Like you didn't heal that person because you didn't fast. He was basically saying the way that you gain this energy and spiritual power is if you, if you privately fast and let God know, I'm serious. I want to starve my body so I can feed my spirit. In the Doctrine and Covenants, it talks about fasting. Is Another word for fasting is rejoicing. Imagine a spirit. What would an angel look like if they were rejoicing? What would a spirit look like on a pulpit rejoicing? Have you looked at yourself? Well, this is the time. You could actually have the spirit rejoice inside of you while you're speaking and people can feel your enthusiasm. So anyway, these are little things. Like I said, those two books, Amen, and the Dale Carnegie book, Praying, Fasting, visualizing. If you did all those things before you did a talk, I guarantee you, and hopefully you'll, I don't care if I get credit for this video. I just, I just want you guys to go out there and serve the Lord. And, and I testify to you that um, it's been a process to um, speak to the church, but please don't decline it. You know, um, God chose you for a reason. You're there to learn. Um, you will be your own greatest teacher by taking these small little uh, assignments uh, from the chosen servants of God. And so I'm grateful for being able to share and teach messages because in the end, we win. Uh, we, we get the most out of it. So uh, for those people who have ever shied away, that's the past. Just forget about it. Just from now on, do some work on yourself. Pray, fast, visualize, do all those things and try it again. It's a new day today. So just try some, try, just try it. And hopefully, like I said, um, I've had really great experiences. I testify to you that the Lord will, will give us a higher portion of the spirit as we just raise our hands for availability. And I testify to you of that, that God lives and that Jesus Christ wants us to serve his children. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.